For the love of the gamer gods, which one of these game pads did you want me to review? Is it the Apex 3 or is it the Vader 3 also from Flight Idiot? These two controllers over shoulder are by far the most heavily requested controllers as of recent. I'd say the last six months or so, my comment section has been getting spammed about these Fly Digi reviews. I thought about reviewing these controllers as a pair, but unfortunately, they're just so different and they definitely deserve their own dedicated videos because I guarantee you the thumbsticks aren't going to perform identically and the triggers, I won't like them identically. They're two different gamepads for God's sakes. Better for search engine optimization in the old YouTube that I have two separate reviews. People looking for those two controllers can find them and also I can monetize two videos. So that, that that's good. Milk the teats. Just, you know, fill the pail. I gotta turn the AC on. It is freakishly hot in here and it's not because these controllers are so spicy. No spicy. No. How do you know that, Kevin? They're in the box. I've already reviewed them. My reviews are shot much like George Lucas's films. Start with the ass end, flip it on its face, hit it from the side, and then I'm gonna hit you with a three-part prologue that's also the sequel though, but you'll understand which controller is best. Not that we're comparing these two. These controllers are going to get reviewed back to back, one review then the other, probably like two days after. However, I am going to start with the Vader 3 because this is by far the one that has been requested the most, and it might be a little bit of confusion amongst the people that are requesting these videos because the naming convention is super funky over there, and one of these controllers doesn't even exist on the manufacturer's website, on Flydigi's website. And then when you search for them on Amazon, the two listings get all fumbled and mumbled together because it says Flydigi 3 in the name, but you got Vader and Apex. They are separated by a price point difference though. And one of them has a screen, an LCD screen. So that's a dead giveaway that you're dealing with some black magic voodoo trickery. We're gonna start with this controller today. We're gonna unbox it. We're gonna test it on a variety of categories, which is gonna be timestamped. It is reflected in the description and the timeline of the video, cause I'm long winded. You wanna take the breeze out of my sails? Uh, skip around, why don't you? I'll be here for all of it. Let's get it. This is your controller, Captain. We've reached 6,900 feet. Go ahead and start flicking the sticks and mollywop in the back paddles. Mmm, you don't like back paddles? How about those rear buttons? We've tested almost 100 custom and premium controllers, and we're only at the beginning. You need a thumbstick guide or a tutorial on how to overclock your controller? Check out the controller playlist. Bing bong. Controller Captain out. This is usually where I insert my little disclaimer if these controllers or peripherals were sent for review. However, Fly Digi did attempt to send some products like eight months ago, and then we lost contact, and they never arrived and I think they forgot they sent me products. I think I forgot that I was waiting on controllers other than the slick reminder I would get slapped with in the comment section. Hey, Vader 3, Apex 3, Fly Digi controllers. You gonna review them, bro? You haven't reviewed them yet. You gonna review those suckers? Yes, we're doing it today. So just to stir the cauldron of confusion, we have the Fly Digi website over here. Ranked number one of game controllers in China. Sick. So these are super Chinese controllers. All granted, uh, all controllers have parts, components that are sent from China, but this controller is straight up, straight up Chinese. If you're one of those diehards, it's like, oh, you better drive an American car. If you pull up in anything other than a Ford or Chevrolet, get the F off my driveway. You probably don't want your friend coming over with a Fly Digi controller. So they make a slew of other products that I can't really speak on the quality of because I haven't tested them yet, such as earbuds. Again, all these products are coming directly from China, but some fun and weird things on this website. First of all, you cannot purchase anything directly from this website. It will take you directly to Amazon. Not only can you not purchase anything, but even just trying to browse some of the key features, generally controller manufacturers have some slick landing page where they're really going to flex the controller's features and whatnot, but they are missing so many models of their controllers. For example, where the hell is the Vader 1 and 3? Where is the Apex 1 and and three. Where is the Vader Pro? Also, when you click on Apex over here, this isn't even the controller that's going to show up. This is the Apex Series 2, the one that has that free-floating action button section. Remember that really weird controller I reviewed uh, months ago? So it's just a really confusing website because these links take you to products on Amazon that aren't even the right products. There's a bunch of missing products and you can't shop here. You can't do anything here. So this website is pretty much useless. Now, the controller we are reviewing here today is the Vader 3. I will also be reviewing the Vader 3 Pro and the Apex 3. Those are the three main Fly Digi controllers that everyone keeps recommending I review. This one is right here. That's got a screen in it. That's just, oh boy. Your only shot or chance of actually understanding the layout of models of Fly Digi controllers, whether it comes to their website, which is an absolute disaster, or it comes to Amazon, is going to be this little chart. This is the only saving grace for their company and customers actually figuring out which model they're trying to buy. Keep in mind, there should never be any miscommunication between between the manufacturer's website and then Amazon. And that's all there is with Fly Digi is not matching up information. Having said that, this is a very useful chart. Down the center is gonna be the categories of components, things such as the 
the D-pad and the battery on board. And then for some reason, you can't swap this side. This is going to be fixed or locked to the Fly Digi Apex 3. But then you're able to switch over here between a multitude of their other models. So the model we're reviewing here today is going to be the Darth Vader 3. And over the next couple weeks, I'm going to be reviewing all the other Fly Digis that people are super moist for me to review, such as the Apex 3, the Apex Elite, the one with this little screen. Something to keep note of right off Jump Street is Fly Digi only makes controllers for the Switch platform as well as PC because everything works on PC. You can force compatibility and drivers and all that fun stuff. But looking at this little chart or breakdown here, you can see you have an 800 milliamp hour battery on board the Vader 3. The thumbstick modules in the Vader 3 are the favor union sticks. Keep in mind, these are still potentiometer thumbstick modules that could inevitably get sticked for you down the road. The D-pad on all of the current models coming out of Fly Digi's warehouse are these tack switches, which are a really cool eight-way micro switch with a wheel. As for the face or action buttons, they're micro switch rubber pad, which really does strike a fine balance between the pros of having a membrane switch, which you're probably used to from a stock controller, and then having the perks of a mechanical tactile switch, something that has a tap life cycle, millions of clicks generally. I couldn't find one for this, but it does feel fantastic because you get that nice tactile click, a great resistance, very light actuating force, and increased resistance, but you still get relatively quiet switches that feel kind of soft and squishy in a good way as well. So it's kind of a hybrid between a membrane and a mechanical switch, which is great. The triggers in the Apex 3 are force feedback hall sticks, which means they are hall effect sensors. These should be a lot more reliable. However, on the Vader 3, which we're reviewing today, not only are they hall, but you also have trigger stops, which allow you to have a tactile mouse-like click for those bang bang mix shooties and then motion function it's really hard to see because i have a dark theme here but there is a little checkbox, a black check on a black screen so it's very hard to see but both of these do have full motion support do they have amiibo support And real quick, because that's a huge point of confusion on myself included, pretty much anyone with neurons and electrons firing in their noggin are going to be confused by the layout of their models here. What the hell is the difference between the Vader 3 and the Vader 3 Pro, considering you can't go to their website and read about them because some of the models just don't exist there? Well, when you click over, you're going to see the joysticks do switch to case silver hall sticks. So that's the biggest selling factor is you have magnetic hall effect thumbstick modules that should, in essence, never get sticked to it for you. The only other component that is different other than the cosmetics here is going to be the triggers, which you have impulse triggers which think of them like the PlayStation 5 DualSense controller, which has the adaptive triggers. They get stiffer or lighter depending on the action on screen, maybe different gas and brake feel for different cars, or you're pulling back a bow and it gets stiffer the harder you pull it. Maybe not stiffer, but more resistance. You're going to have similar technology here. However, keep in mind, since it's not communicating with a PlayStation 5 console, which is designed specifically to take advantage of that feature, <laughs> It will try and supplement this through the software of the controller, and it does a decent job, but it's not going to be like a one-to-one -one experience of what you're used to with the adaptive triggers on the PS5. It's not the same. Speaking of which, there's a PC program called DSX, which I'll be doing a tutorial for in the near future, which takes the features from the DualSense, such as the haptic feedback and adaptive triggers, and makes them usable on PC. But just like what I'm talking about here, it's not exactly a one-to-one -one experience, so it does what it says. Sort of. Pretty good presentation and just general appearance for a $76 controller. It is $90 for the Vader 3 Pro, which looks substantially different and will be reviewed in the near future. You have this little card, which I'm assuming is thanking you for your purchase. That's a sick ass signature, by the way. This is an empty box, but at one time it had a controller inside it. And if you wanted to pause to read some of the key features, um, go ahead. Just go do it. Do it. Do it. Plastics feel pretty damn cheap. I can tell that immediately, but the controller does look very slick. You have a little cutout for your finger. All right, um, I retract my previous statement to a certain degree. Still feels cheap, but uh, a different type of cheap. In this box, you're gonna have two paper manuals, two pieces of plastic, three QR codes, one cable. How long is it? About 10 foot. Just rubber, not microfiber, braided, no dust covers on the USB-A or C end. Oh, it looks like a 3.0 cable, or at least they're trying to deceive us, making that blue usually a 3.0 thing, which I've covered in the past going USB 3.0 versus 2.0 makes no difference for controllers as far as speed. It's more so for data transfer rate when you're transferring files and stuff like that. What the fuck? It's even blue inside the USB-C end. The instruction manual, I can't make heads or tails, tips or tits with it. It's not in my language, my native tongue. Cosmetically, this controller does a delectable dance of death on my corneas as it looks pretty damn sexy. You have this gray lettering on the face buttons, which I think looks very slick. Those are mechanical. My God, those feel good. So much resistance on the triggers too. I love that. Anti-friction rings, eight-way micro switch D-pad. Yeah, this controller's got some things going for it. Thanks. Yeah. 
including rear buttons. It, it has them, four of them. Trigger stops as well. Ooh, and the trigger stops actually become a digital mechanical mouse click. I love that for you, and I love that for me as well. Let me get these rear buttons in hand real quick. Uh, well, they can't all be winners. We'll talk about these later. You do also have two metal contacts on the bottom, so you can drop it into a charging dock, which is not included, but they do sell it for this many amount of monies. Is it available on their website? No, nothing is. You don't buy things there. It just transfers you to Amazon. Stupid idiot. There's also an included dongle. I completely forgot to mention this because it fell in my lap down here in the crotchal region, but now that I've recovered it, this thing feels incredibly cheap and chintzy. I also hate the design because it's like these two sandwiched flat matte pieces and then this gloss piano black section, which looks fucking dumb. And it also just feels like a toy. Also, just a couple of quick notes. Small typo on the Amazon listing. This should be current, not warrant. Also, charging current. A thousand milliamps getting shoved into an 800 milliamp hour battery. Okay. Also, I think this should be renamed a dongle or transmitter because technically Technically, Bluetooth is a wireless connection, but a different type of wireless connection. And I've never seen this on a controller listing ever, but they put a humidity range of 20 to 80%. So don't be taking this into any jungles or rainforests. And you have an astronomically large 33 foot of range. I don't know why you'd ever want to be that far from your console or PC. Maybe you're doing some long range gaming. As for ergonomics or comfort, this is almost identical to an Xbox One or series controller as far as the dimensions, the shell design is concerned, which is a good thing because those are pretty goddamn comfortable. The only thing this controller doesn't have going for it is those pretty porous plastics, which I mentioned feel pretty goddamn cheap. And also there's no rubberized grips. You have this little bit of plastic stippling, which ugh, isn't the best. Other than that, this gamepad feels great in the hand and these four rear buttons don't cut into comfort negatively at all. It's still very comfy. As for the percepted build quality of China's number one controller, it's not fantastic to be 100% honest with you. Pretty large panel gaps or seams. There's also two different types of plastic distinctly used here. You have this rough porous shit. And then you have the stippling that's only on the grips here, and then it returns to the cheap plastic over here, which I think is just kind of funky. Also, this entire top section feels so cheap, and there is a little lock-in section. Plastics here feel so cheap that it could just rip out of there. I will say for the price, it kind of sucks that I have to caveat the compliment I'm about to give, but for the price, it does feel pretty good. But overall, in general, of all the game pads I've had my hands wrapped around, ugh, she doesn't feel the best, and it's because of these cheap porous plastics on the front and those large panel gaps. However, every Everything else, face buttons being clicky, thumbsticks actually feeling quite secure, increased resistance on the triggers until you turn on those stops and then you get these nice clickeroonies. Everything feels good individual component wise, just that front face plate. Just use like a soft touch rubberized material. And I think that tricked the human brain into thinking it's a more durable, better controller. And if anything goes awry or janky, you do have a one year of coverage with that warranty. Pretty standard. I thought about doing my hair today, but that's not going to increase the quality of this review whatsoever. It was skipped. But what's not going to be skipped is this D-pad or direction buttons because they're absolutely friggin' fantastic. You have an eight-way micro switch in there, which means that each and every input, including those diagonal ways, have their own separate gates, which I really like. I really like how quiet it is as well because Razer uses a similar micro switch D-pad and it's pretty goddamn loud. So I like that this is quiet and also feels more secure, which is hilarious because those are hundred plus dollar controllers and this is China's number one controller and it's, it's rocking a better feeling D-pad than Razer by a good margin. Also, the plastics on the D-pad feel pretty good, pretty supple on the thumb. I really do like this. It makes changing directions, doing roll-offs, and even just swapping weapons with the four-point. It'd be cool if it was removable and then you had a four-point option as well. This is great. Eight out of 10. I just realized I was accidentally testing the low-light performance of this iPhone, which probably isn't the greatest because I had my ring light set at 30 percentile. Now we're at 80, so I can really scorch my corneas. I don't mind getting flashbanged during my videos. It's just occupational hazard. Face or action buttons feel fantastic. At least these four up here. These two down here are going to be a typical membrane switch, which is silly to the brain when you're like, mm, these are clicky bits. And then you come down here and you got the mushy bits down here. It's not too big of a deal considering these aren't going to be used constantly. They're just going to be additional inputs that you combine. I did find it odd that these don't have a tap life cycle considering they are mechanical switches. Why use mechanical switches and not put a tap life cycle unless they are subpar switches? That's literally the only reason I could think of not including, hey, rated for 5 million or 10 million clicks or more. They go higher than that, but they do get more expensive along the way. And I'm sure they're trying to keep manufacturing costs down. So it keeps the cost down for us, the customer, China's number one controllers. They can't be super expensive and they're not. So I don't like that they do not have a tap life cycle. I also don't like that they're super rounded. They're virtually identical to Xbox series buttons, which are super round and glossy. I mentioned during my Xbox versus PlayStation controller video that I do like the flatness and the overall shorter actuation of the PlayStation 5 DualSense. But what I really do like is the way they feel. I mean, 
mean, that's the most important part. You're gonna be touching these buttons a lot. Pretty good amount of resistance. Nice tactile click to let you know that you did actuate those buttons. They also snap back freakishly fast, the rebound very quick. And I think what I like most about them is that they are kind of a mix of having a mechanical switch and having a membrane switch, which you really don't see. Generally, these companies take it to one degree or the other. Mm, my last note is that since they do have a rubber pad under here, they should be substantially quiet. Oh, wrong buttons. Substantially quieter. This really isn't a huge deal if you have some headphones on or you're blaring your surround sound, but if you're playing in bed, TV turned down quiet, and you got your significant other passed out next to you, these are kind of loud. Six out of 10. Six out of 10. No, no. Yeah, six out of 10. That's fair. Now, as far as the accessory buttons, that's going to be this awkwardly cocked or diagonal diagon alley start and select button. That's just a, a, a hard plastic piece of shit. That's stupid is what that is. And then your home and McCircle button down here. You would think that this is to turn on the console up here. This giant oversized button would work as a home button. Nah, it's this little one down here. I really don't like that these start and select are cocked at an angle that really doesn't serve any purpose, but you can still cleanly hit them. They're in a decent place. So I'm going to give the whole suite a five out of 10. And falling in line with that accessory suite, you do have these two metal pads, which are for their optional charger dock, which looks super cheap. Even on the landing page, there's like massive panel gaps where all the seams meet. I did order one. It'll be here tomorrow or the next day. Day. So for future Fly Digi controller reviews, as almost all the new ones are compatible with that charging dock, I will include a little blurb about my thoughts on that. Thumbsticks. As for the thumbsticks, analog sticks, joysticks, mm, these are the same thumbsticks that they've been using forever. I'm talking about the actual caps here, which are meant to pull off like that, but there is no swappable options in the box. Yeah, no, that's empty. So that's a stupid feature. Why have swappable thumbstick caps if there's nothing to swap to? Yes, you can get the other Fly Digi controller, the higher end flagship models that come with swappable sticks, and I'm sure they use the same mechanism and you could just swap those on there, but this is just pointless. Also, the actual rubber silicone compound that they use is not grippy at all. And I would recommend looking to the aftermarket, maybe some control freaks or skull and bone or bone your cross or whatever that other company's called. As for control freak compatibility, I got a fat bag right here, big old sack. And uh, I've got the black Omnis for Xbox one and series. If you could autofocus, that'd be crisp. Several millimeters too small. Wouldn't even attempt it. They don't fit. Got some white galaxies for PlayStation four and five. Mm -mm too tight. And these are red infernos for the Nintendo Switch Pro Controller. Nope. Zero control free thumbstick cap compatibility. However, you can take the universal route, not the scuff universals, because those indeed aren't truly universal. There's several thumbsticks that do not work with those. Kind of misleading because it has the word universal in the name. But other universals, such as the ones from Control Freak or Play Vital or Extreme Rate, or even some generic brandless ones on Amazon, and you'll get a little bit more grip and maybe a little more height as well, which I would recommend because these stock thumbstick caps do not feel great. I do like that there is anti-friction rings, so you do glide along that smooth plastic when you're at full lock on the outside of your thumbstick gates. It's pretty sick. Clicking down L3 and R3. It's a mix sack. It's a little bit hollow and tinny, but also feels pretty good as well. Decent amount of resistance as well. Also, let me show you something real quick. I saw V Cuda, who's another really good controller reviewer, using one of these bad boys. This is a force actuation measure, so you can measure the strength that it takes to pull the trigger on a firearm, or sure enough, how much resistance is on thumbsticks. So there are indeed controllers that have increased thumbstick tension. In fact, you pay for the feature on the builder. So this would be a cool tool to measure that. However, it is so goddamn complicated to use, and I'm not really getting consistent readings with it. So yeah, I could just kind of cheese it and be like, yeah, this is the readings that I'm getting. Since it's not really meant for controller thumbsticks, Sticks. I've tried the push and pull methods, different units and everything, and I'm not really getting consistent, accurate measurements with this. Not saying that other reviewers that use these aren't, but I'm not, and I don't really think I'm going to be using this. You know what I mean? The idea was good. It was recommended to me by like two or three subscribers in the comment section. And of course, me being the yes man, I'm like, yeah, hell yeah, I'll check it out. And I did. And it just, it's stupid for controllers. It really is. Let me give you my ex-military explanation. I'm going to be training with this piece of equipment until I feel confident in its intended uses. As right now, I really don't. And I'm not getting consistent results. They're different each and every time I measure. Now, Vcuda did send me a message in Discord messages, I guess, plural, trying to explain how to use this thing. Give me a little behind the scenes training. I did buy a different different model than he did from Amazon. Maybe that's where some of my issues are coming from. Eventually, you will see one of these devices implemented in my controller reviews for the thumbstick section, but um, it might be a while because I want to make sure I fully understand what I'm doing with this device. Every segment of my controller reviews, whether I'm overclocking, measuring the polling rate, measuring the thumbsticks and gamepad tester, I did a shitload of research as to what I'm doing before I present it to your doorstep and provide a bunch of misinformation to the internet. Not going to do that with this, but just using my hands, the good Lord bless 
me with these feel like standard thumbsticks because they are standard potentiometer thumbsticks. Let's plug them into the PC and see how they perform. Over here in the one, the only, the gamepad tester, which you know how to use as good as I do because you followed along with my tutorial that I posted last week, we have a perfect resting value of 0.00002. Let's test the circularity to get our thumbstick accuracy, shall we? Not the best, but pretty standard for potentiometer thumbstick modules. Yeah, I mean, that's, you know, red, you're dead in gameplay. We don't like to see red. We like to see this blue, maybe a little bit of pink or purple in there. Red is not good. That means that these areas, your inputs simply aren't getting recognized, but this is pretty on par for potentiometer thumbstick modules. But that Vader 3 Pro with those magnetic Hall effect sticks will have substantially better results. Just calling it now. Now let's bump each other with talking about these bumpers. As for the bumpers, I do like this dark gray. Cosmetically, I think it looks kind of nice. However, this little plastic stippling doesn't provide the best grip and they just feel super dumbass cheap. I do like that you can actuate them here, here, here. It really doesn't matter. Most controllers that are on a swivel or hinge mechanism, you get better luck pressing them over here. But this model, it doesn't matter. You can press over here and it's still buttery smooth to actuate. I'm gonna give them a six out of 10. As for the triggers, not only in this price point, but just in general, these are pretty gosh darn solid. They have a good amount of resistance or strength more than you're used to with a standard controller for sure. But when you turn on these trigger stops, you instantly get a nice mechanical mouse click, which I've got to say over the eight, nine, 10, maybe even more companies I've tried now with these style of mechanical clicky tactile triggers, these feel almost the best. The only thing that could make them feel a little bit better is using higher quality plastics because what's making contact with your fingers isn't the greatest, but the actual switches in there are a perfect amount of resistance and also just easy to actuate super fast. I love them. I'm going to give the triggers a nine out of 10. Change those plastics up and make these three-way trigger stops and dear Lord, these are getting there. I finally did something with my hair now that we're at the end of the video. These four rear buttons had potential to be great. And while these two outermost ones are pretty decent, these inner ones, you got to work for them. Moving your fingers just a little bit to hit them. You can't really cover all four of them simultaneously, which isn't a huge deal. But what is a big deal, you cannot remap these on the fly. Or if you can, there's nothing in the instruction manual. In fact, the instruction manual has zero North American or English instructions. If I block this one with my finger, you can scan that QR code. Go ahead and pause, pinch, zoom, do what you need to with your phone. That will take you to a North American or English manual. But that one still doesn't explain how to rebind these rear buttons, but that's because you have to use their application, their software suite, which is pretty horrendous. It's called Space Station. You have to go on a full space expedition to get it, to download it. But I will be giving you a full tour walkthrough in a couple of segments. Actually, I think it's the next segment. Yup, that's how it always goes. It's rear buttons and then the software suite, so it's next. But ergonomically, these are in a pretty comfortable position where you want to naturally rest your hands. That's where you're covering these rear buttons. They're also pretty silent, quick to actuate. Plastics feel decent on my fingertips. But the fact you can't rebind on the fly, or if you can, I've got to know how to do it. <laughs> Give me some instructions. That's a problem. Also, something that does deserve mentioning is that Fly Digi controllers are some of the few controllers that work with a program on the PC called Rewaz, where you can actually dedicate your four rear buttons to PC specific features. So if you're trying to control OBS to change scenes and run your stream, or maybe you want to turn up and down the volume in windows from those back buttons or something like that, you can actually do that. However, less than 10% of people buying that controller are even going to know about, let alone use Rewazd on PC, considering it's a Switch controller and the people that are picking this up for PC might not even know about Rewazd. And if they do, you're still probably going to want to rebind the front face buttons or D-pad to those rear buttons. That's usually what you do with a pro controller. But in the very, very Paquito, small, itty bitty, tiny, neat, use case scenario that you want to bind those rear buttons to Windows specific PC features, you can do that. So to get that sweet, sweet Fly Digi software that you need to rebind those rear buttons, which by the way, it's not called Game Center, that's something else. They have all their software applications under this umbrella, which is kind of confusing. Also, what's confusing, you cannot get to this download page from their main website. There's no path to follow by going to support or anything, forward slash index, forward slash down. Hopefully I remember to put this in the description. If not, this is the magic. And this this is the version that you want, Fly Digi Space 3.0. It was alerted or pinged as a potential virus by Microsoft Defender, but me risking it for a biscuit or for this review, I pushed on through. I do have it installed. It's pinned down to the taskbar for easy access. When you pop it up, this is what's going to look like. You got the Vader 3, the 3 Pro, the 3 Pro One Piece. It's the same exact controller, but it just looks different cosmetically. And when you plug it in, it's not going to be plug and play and just start working because that would be a little bit too easy for you. What you're going to do is select the controller that you want. Then are you trying to go wired or wireless? Well, I want the least amount of potential errors here. So we're going to go wired. Now I'm connected to the PC. I need to press this home button. 
boom little vibration rumble in the controller you cannot full screen this application you can't even pinch the sides to resize which sucks oh i also hate that as well you have your local games over here which by the way i have a lot more games installed on my pc than just this but you can do by game or per game profiles which i can guarantee you is not going to be as smooth of a process as the manufacturer believes it to be this whole part of the application should just be lopped off with the next update you click on function settings you get this little pop-up that pops up and lets you know with quick switch configuration you can actually swap between four profiles or configurations on the fly i like that also you can set your sleep time defaults 15 minutes so i'm going to set it to five save a little battery life now that quick switch configuration isn't going to work by default you need to go ahead and tick this and then you need to select your four configurations the very first thing i recommend you do is click on this gamepad icon and you are going to have two updates available one for the software which is fucking dumb because i just installed it it should be the latest version and then the controller which makes sense Okay, stability upgrades, one click upgrade. There she goes. So it actually did work exactly like I was just ranting how it should, where you click on update and it says, hey man, you just installed the app. You're up to the latest and greatest. I will say cosmetically, this is a pretty poor looking application. It is difficult to navigate and it doesn't look very clean, but it does have the core functionality we want from a software program. Clicking on test over here, this is gonna be a diagnostic tool. And this is so neato Toledo. As I move the controller back and forth, that polling rate is changing in real time. So if I sit and go static, I'm not touching anything. I'm down to zero hertz, but I start moving around. Boom. I get up to that maximum of 400 hertz. Also, you do have a visual representation of the thumbsticks, which looks identical to what we get in gamepad tester. So that's really cool that this is baked in. And of course, pressing all the buttons will activate them. These C and Z buttons over here, these little additional face buttons are actually clicking down the left and right thumbsticks. Funky chicken. Clicking what looks like an advertisement down here to update instructions is going to take you to this PDF document, which I wish they had an English version that'd be lit. Now joystick dead zone compensation is at 15% by default. Let's make that zero and hit save. Obviously the tightest smallest dead zones we can get without stick drift is what we're going for. To test that stick drift theory let's come back over here to test and guess what we are still not drifting out of those crosshairs as we move around then we stop we're right back in the center. Love it. And this is pretty neat. You have thumbstick sensitivity which of course every single modern shooter third or first person shooter actually most modern games period have some kind of look sensitive sensitivity in the in-game settings, the default is only 25. Now, the most important thing you're going to need to do with this application, and I do mean need, you need the software suite for it, is going to be rebinding the six additional buttons. So these two on the front, C and Z, are currently the left and right analog stick, but I'd like them to not be. So clicking on them, you now press on the controller, which you'd like to map to. So click, and then on the controller, I want that right on the D-pad. Once you've made all your selections, do not forget to hit save or else nothing's going to take effect. Now, this first page homepage is going to act as a dashboard. If you click on any of these extra settings, it will pop you to the concurrent tab where you can fine tune, but homepage is going to be a summary of your controller. You can actually rebind all of your buttons, so not just the six additional inputs, but all of the face buttons as well. Joystick, you can set up thumbstick sensitivity curves as well as tighten up your dead zones. And I will make a separate tutorial in the near future going over thumbstick response and sensitivity curves, what they are and why you might want to set up custom ones yourself. Make sure you hit save. Over here in motion sensing, you can also set up the sensitivity of your motion sense aiming and dead zone for that as well. Well, so if you're drifting when you're not moving, you can set that up here and also set up what button will activate that motion sense aiming. So while you're holding down left trigger in this instance, you're going to be able to aim by tilting the controller. You do also have minimum and maximum squeeze for the triggers. And then in general, this is going to be your lighting, which is going to be for the fly digi logo over here. Streamlined. I don't know what the hell that means. Breathing means it fades in and out. Gradient rotates through the rainbow spectrum. Feedback whenever you get vibration, the light comes on. Steady is going to be a static color and off. Just that. Save yourself some battery life. You can also adjust the vibration strength or turn it off completely, but I don't like that you cannot test it by pressing a little rumble button. I would have to give it a 4 out of 10. I just don't like the user interface, and I think the biggest complaint is that everything you should be able to do in a controller software suite, you can do, but it just doesn't look the prettiest, and also having those local games on the left with specific game settings is usually very confusing. It's better just to have onboard profiles, which you do. You have four onboard profiles, so just ditch the local game setting. It looks kind of silly. Also, if you could full screen or even pinch the sides and resize the window, that would earn some big points for me. Also, I thought it's kind of silly that in order to rebind, you not only need this application, but then you also need to use the mouse and the controller. You need to click or highlight with the mouse and then grab the controller and click each face button that you want to bind it to. You should be able to do it all from the controller or all from keyboard and mouse, not need both. That's 
stupid. As for estimated battery life on this bad boy, the Vader 3 does have an 800 milliamp hour battery on board, which doesn't sound like jack shit. However, in essence, that can get you 40 hours of gameplay and does support fast charging with one to two hours getting you fully topped off. Now, you might be thinking to yourself, Kevin, those numbers just simply don't make sense because there's a 1560 milliamp hour battery in a PlayStation 5 DualSense controller, and I'm only getting about four to six hours of gameplay on that. Four to six hours, huh? Must have been smoking some moon dust or something. I must have been thinking about the DualSense Edge. So Sony's first party pro controller as that does have a physically smaller milliamp hour battery, but yet the same battery draining features of the DualSense controller. With a stock DualSense, you're going to get about six to 12 hours of gameplay. With the DualSense Edge, you're going to get about four to six, up to eight if you turn off all the shit like vibration, lights, adaptive triggers, microphone, and all the other cool stuff you probably want to leave on. And even without those features, it does seem like 40 hours of battery life on an 800 milliamp hour battery just, it doesn't make sense to me, but I can't debunk that or say it's not true because I haven't been able able to kill the battery on it yet, so it might very well be true. But we have controllers out there like the Microsoft Elite Series 2, which has an estimated 40 hours of battery life, and that's actually underestimated from the manufacturer as I've gotten what seems like double that at some points, and the standby time is astronomical. I throw that gamepad in a drawer, come back to it two months later, play for a couple of hours, do the same thing over and over, and it seems like I hardly ever charge the thing. A little sidetracked, but we're talking about batteries, so it's kind of still related. If you're related, you shouldn't be doing this to each other, touching fingers like this. Quick, I just got to tell you about this. This does have multiple connection methods for PC. You have X input and you also have D input, which is an older technology. So if you're running some retro emulation, that will help you out a whole shitload. Also, the Bluetooth card on board is Bluetooth 5.0, which is cool, but it's not 3.0 or some older technology. Getting our first pull and X input test to get the input lag or delay. Wow, that completed very fast because this controller is indeed very fast. I think I can get that average a little bit lower but we're getting a 1.8 on the first pull. Also dumbass consistent as the minimum and maximum very close together. Jitter also super low as well, and I'm getting an indicated polling rate of 500 hertz. Let's run a few more. Bam. So that test completes very quick because the computer is receiving those thousand inputs or samples. Lickety split, lick the... <coughs> Also wildly consistent, that second pull also close with the minimum and maximum, about the same average, 1.8, still showing a 500 on the polling rate, jitter, low as hell, this is nice. Can I overclock it? That would make it even nicer if I could shove uh, a faster polling rate into this controller. Over here in the Lord of Mice overclocking program, if you select all in this drop down, you will see your controller, Xbox 360 controller for Windows, somewhere between 1 and 16 milliseconds of input lag or delay, not overclocked on the stock clock, not for long, I tell you that right now. Balls to the wall, 1000 hertz, install service. You open, filter on device, install that service. Open, unplug, replug. <laughs> Overclock is reflected. Did it do anything for us though? Let's run another poll. <laughs> Negatory comrades, I'll run another one just to put a little nail in the coffin for us. Not susceptible to being overclocked, it is polling rate locked. However, the stock clock, which is kind of interesting because if you manually analyze the numbers, it does bounce between this high nine, this 0 0.9, if you will, and then this 1.9. So an entire one millisecond of difference back and forth, but that does average out to about two milliseconds of input lag or delay on that 500 hertz stock clock. Not bad. I've deliberated in my chambers and I'm ready to smack the gavel on my desk. The verdict, do I recommend this controller? Well, for Switch, absolutely not. I just reviewed a controller that was $45 that I think is substantially better part for part, component by component, specifically for Nintendo Switch. How about if you're on the PC side of the house? Well, I can't really recommend picking up the Vader 3 considering the Pro now exists. However, it is pretty much impossible to get at the moment as it is currently unavailable and Amazon has no idea if that bad boy's going to get back in stock and Alibaba and Wish.com and Teemu and other sites where you can get cheap Chinese electronic items sent to your door in about three months with no customer service. Do sell this controller. You can get Fly Digi controllers on those janky websites. They're all sold out as well. So you can't get the Vader 3 Pro right now. It was back in stock about a week and a half ago. I missed out on that drop. Missed out because Fly Digi and I had emailed back and forth about three or four months ago about sending me out a controller for review. That never happened. We lost communication, so I took it to myself to buy one on Amazon. They're hard as shit to get right now, which leads you to maybe ending up having to get the Vader 3 because the Pro, nobody knows when it's going to come back in stock. Having said that, this is the Pro, but $10 cheaper without magnetic Hall effect sticks and with triggers that don't have those impulse adjustment motors that get stiffer or lighter, which again, not a big selling factor for 
me because I've experienced them and they're not like what you're used to on the PlayStation 5 DualSense when you're playing natively on that console. It's kind of a gimmicky feature that I would turn off, especially when I'm playing on PC where I'm mostly playing competitive shooters and whatnot. And the only thing the Pro really has going for itself is those magnetic Hall Effect thumbsticks. I don't recommend the Vader 3. As far as the 3 Pro, which is $10 more expensive on Amazon and has the Hall Effect sticks and those impulse triggers, still... I don't just want to all out say I don't recommend that controller because then you won't watch the review. It's going to be in a few days packed full of all kinds of controller goodness and humor and comedy sprinkled in there. It's going to be a dank review regardless of the fact if I don't recommend it or not. These controllers are so highly recommended by my audience to review and I get it. They've got the mechanical clicky face buttons. They have rear buttons. They got trigger stops. They have all the pro controller features. They put a tick in all the boxes that, that I like to have tickled. But there's other controllers at the same price point, even cheaper that are on the same platform, Switch that are better. And to really explain my major gripes with this controller, you have to rebind those buttons with the Space Station application, which is only available on PC and Mac. So if you don't have a computer, these buttons are completely useless to you. The main feature of this Pro Controller is null and void, NA, not usable to you because you don't have the software program, which is a real sack of crap, by the way, the program itself. And if there is a way to rebind these buttons on the fly, I apologize, but that needs to be made incredibly apparent in the instruction manual. And not only is there no English, in the instruction manual, even on the digital or software instruction manual, it's, it says nothing about these rear buttons. There's no amiibo support, despite the fact that it tricks the games into thinking it has amiibo. It'll turn on the amiibo scanning function, but there's no sensor for amiibo support. The motion sensing was pretty stuttery and sputtery. It wasn't as fluid and smooth as other cheaper third-party controllers that I've used on Switch. The charging dock, which I think should be included with the higher-end models, the more expensive controllers, I get maybe not on the Vader 3, but the Pro should for sure come with the little charging cradle or dock. That looks and feels like a cheap piece of crap as well. So as to not say I don't recommend this controller at all, because that's not true. If you have $75 in your wallet, you like mechanical clicky buttons that feel good, but don't have a tap life cycle. You're okay with a one year warranty. And maybe you can't get the pro in your region because it's not available or you don't want to spend the extra 10 to $15 for that model. Then this is a gamepad that exists and it's not terrible. It just by no means lives up to the hype. Full disclosure, too, I am very familiar with Fly Digi controllers. I've been using them for uh, about a year and a half now. So this isn't just like I unboxed this controller and this is my first attempt at schwacking this controller. I've used Fly Digi controllers pretty extensively in the past, had a good amount of stick time with them, and my thoughts remain the same. There's better options out there. And I will be reviewing the other models in the Fly Digi lineup because they do have additional features that might sweeten the deal for you. I'll see you stallions and stallionettes tomorrow. Peace. That hit me in the crotch. If you enjoyed the video, liking it helps it to get seen by more gamers. This information will reach in a system as well, which in turn helps me grow this little channel, which I do greatly appreciate. Subscribe for more content like this. I cover news in the gaming community and industry, tutorials helping you get set up streaming and YouTubing, as well as honest gaming product reviews, keyboards, mice, headsets, controllers, mics, chairs, etc. There are some hefty exclusive discount codes found only in the description of my videos and only for the audience here at Gamer Heaven. I have links to all my other platforms and socials in the description below. To get in touch with myself and the stallions and stallionettes of gamer heaven join the community discord and check me out at twitch.tv where i go live every other leap year on a blue moon if it falls into an odd calendar number and my ph balance is on point just kidding starting june i'm going to be live streaming a lot thanks for watching this has been ak40 kevin hosting gamer heaven and i'll see you tomorrow because i upload daily all the time 60 percent of the time sometimes most of the time peace